Can you reverse or treat kyphosis? When patients get evaluated with the spine, one, of, one diagnosis is something called thoracic kyphosis or kyphosis of the spine. And we understand that the spine has some natural curvatures that are very important to the normal function and alignment of the spine. And these normal curvatures are normally considered from the side view or the sagittal view of the spine, and they help make the spine very strong or resistant to gravity. Also, these normal curvatures allow for good spinal flexibility and range of motion, and they help distribute mechanical stress that's occurred through movement. And these normal curvatures occur in the neck and the thoracic and in the lumbar spine. When we look at different types of curvatures, we understand that there's something called a lordosis. And lordosis is occur in the cervical spine and the lumbar spine, and they actually bend towards or towards the inward or towards the front side of the spine. And then there's something called the kyphosis, and kyphosis curves actually bend towards the back or the backwards area, of, bends towards the back of the body. We understand that there's different types of curvatures in the spine, something called the lordosis. Lordosis are normal in the cervical spine and the lumbar spine, and they're a forward C-shape curvature that bend towards the inward or towards the front of the body. The other type of curvature is something called a kyphosis, and a kyphosis is what bends um, towards the back of the spine, and it's normally in the thoracic spine. Now, interesting enough, if you have an opposite curvature in the wrong area of the body, that's considered abnormal. So you can actually have a kyphosis in the, in the cervical spine. That would be something called abnormal. A kyphosis in the lumbar spine would become, be considered abnormal, and a lordosis in the thoracic spine would also be something abnormal. But these normal curvatures also have a normal range within them, meaning a lordosis needs to be within a certain range, a kyphosis needs to be within a certain range, and, and, and those, such forth. In the thoracic spine, a normal kyphosis is between 20 and 40 degrees. Once this curvature starts becoming greater than 50 degrees, that's considered excessive kyphosis, and that's what we call hyperkyphosis. Hyperkyphosis means there's too much of this kyphosis curvature, and we want to reduce what this is. The normal symptom or what we see when we see kyphosis or hyperkyphosis of the thoracic spine is that we see rounding of the shoulders and the upper back. It's very often uh, referred to as something called a rounded back or a hunched back. It can cause pain, it can, uh, in, in pain, back pain, it can cause radicular pain, but most commonly it causes stiffness within the thoracic spine. Like it's very difficult for the person to extend and open up their chest and they sit very rounded and they, they can't open up properly. The most common causes of kyphosis in the thoracic spine, the number one is postural. You know, we understand that chronic posture can change the shape of your spine and help you kind of sit and, and cause you to, to sit more forward. And we unfortunately, we're seeing this more and more common with technology and cell phones and laptops and tablets that patients are spending much more time and kids are spending much more time with their body flexed forward. And it can, as they're growing and developing, they can develop this postural within their spine, which is something we call a postural kyphosis. Um, the second thing is something called Sherman's kyphosis. Sherman kyphosis is actually a result of a misshaped vertebra. This actually means one of the vertebra doesn't actually form into a rectangle, but actually slightly into a wedge vertebra like a triangle. This wedge vertebra, if it occurs here in the thoracic spine, can increase that kyphosis and it becomes much more structural. The issue is once this thing starts wedged, we know if this happens during growth, the longer this wedge stays untreated, the more wedging it causes because they're growing with this, this wedging, wedging occurring. So normally if we see Sherman's kyphosis, we want to deal with it very quickly. In postural kyphosis, we actually have to determine is this a non-structural issue? Because unfortunately, postural kyphosis can become structural. So number one thing we determine, if a scoliosis, or I'm sorry, if a kyphosis is treatable, we have to understand, number one, is it a postural kyphosis or is it a structural kyphosis? And is there any Sherman's problem going on there? In a postural kyphosis that's non-structural, these are normally very treated, mean, treated very well. It means the, the thoracic spine is still relatively flexible. We can use therapy and rehabilitation and postural type of exercises to help improve the, 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 scoli the kyphosis, to help improve the situation. But if this becomes structural, meaning it becomes resistant to forces, then they can't pull themselves out by correcting their posture. Then we have to use more therapies and exercises and tractions and rehabilitations to help push and help the patient be able to get into this corrected position. 
in the Sherman's kyphosis, where it's actually there's bone structure, treatment has to really impact the condition on a structural level. And the structural level really has to be like very specific types of chiropractic care, different types of physical therapy, exercises that encourage extension within the thoracic spine. Then we have to increase muscle strength and stability to help support the spine. And very often in these cases, we're using also corrective bracing. And the concept of correcting bracing is to actually try to push the spine into a corrective position so they can actually get out of this kyphosis. It's not squeezing style bracing, it's just trying to slow down the progression over time. So in a structural case, meaning either a, a postural scoliosis that's turned structural or a Sherman's um, kyphosis, in both those things, you have to address the structure. And the way you address the structure is by using a, a series of treatments and modalities properly sequenced to get the very best outcome. And you want to take pre and post x-rays to see the curves are actually reducing and these kyphosis are actually reducing. The stiffer and the bigger these kyphosis become, the more difficult they are to reduce, meaning younger patients will always respond better than older patients, and smaller kyphosis will always respond better than bigger kyphosis. So when's the best time to treat a kyphosis is the minute you find it. Normally when you watch and just wait and see if the curve or the kyphosis is going to worsen, normally what you're watching and waiting is a harder curve to treat and a less of a, a, less of a result over time. Even though we're, we know that no treatment guarantees results, but the sooner you treat it, the more likely you are to get a result in the case, and the more likely you are to improve what you see visually and to prove what the patients are experiencing symptomatically as a result of the kyphosis. So at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer very proactive treatments that can impact a kyphosis during its progressive states as a child or slow progressive states as an adult that can actually change the shape of the spine, help reduce the structural misalignments, and help prevent any further deformation from occurring to the vertebras, no matter what the cause, whether it be structural, a postural one that becomes structural, or a Sherman's kyphosis that's developing um, during growth and development. So we recommend proactive treatment, and we recommend addressing the spine early as opposed to later. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.